Joining us now is the man who's the general manager of the team that DeMar Hamlin plays for. He's put together quite a roster that is always in conversation about winning a Super Bowl. How's the pressure? Who cares? You need to perform, and it better be great. Yeah. Joining us now, a great golfer. Oh, great golfer. Yeah. I guess he's a great golfer. Real mm -hmm. stick. I wonder how the golf season went this particular offseason. Joining us now, general manager for the Buffalo Beals. Ladies and gentlemen, Brandon Bain. Appreciate that, Pat. Hey, I appreciate you, Brandon. I don't know if you see what I just put on the back here just to make you feel a little bit more at home. This is your new oh. stadium that's coming here in a few years, and I've been told, Bean, mm -hmm. yep. and I don't want to do this immediately upon the conversation. I'm asked about DeMar, and I'm asked about the team, what? and all the good stuff you guys got yep. going, and yep. everything like that. I've been told, Bean, okay, I'm not happy about it, and neither are the people. Nope. <laughs> These fucking buffaloes are not the size of the ones that are going to be in real life. Oh, That's right. No. I've been told that you guys got little baby buffaloes in real life. Mm -hmm. And on this sketch, these things are almost the size of the stadium. Where is the miscommunication <laughs> being? Are we getting big-ass buffaloes? Or is it going to be little smaller buffaloes out there in real life? We're going to get big-ass buffaloes. Hell yeah. Okay. Huge. All right. Let the buffaloes know, brother. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let the buffaloes know, brother. We got big Buffalo's coming to town. That's Hopefully some live ones. How about that? Oh, That's could you awesome. imagine you had them just... Holy <laughs> shit. Like that was a part of it, like your uh, miniature golfing, the humans. Mm -hmm. Just like Buffalo storming. <laughs> have them lead you yeah. out. Have them lead, them, right. lead the team out of the tunnel. Have like five of them like lead Colorado the team. Like Colorado. Yeah, that, that mm -hmm. thing. Is, Ralphie, I believe, is the Ralph. name of the Buffalo. Yeah. Anyways, good luck with the new stadium building. We did hear that there was old baby Buffaloes and there was, there was Buffalonians yeah. that were not happy about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to hear we got big-ass Buffaloes. That's good news. Shit, put it on the thicker. Yeah, yeah. I'm, put it I'm, all, I'm all over it. Big ass buffaloes. Okay, thank you. How's the um, how's the team? How's the vibes? How's the morale? We were just talking about Demar Hamlin. Obviously, this situation is something AJ just alluded to. We've never seen before. And I was at yeah. the ESPYS uh, two weeks ago, and there were so many video packages. And I got a chance to meet Denny Kellington and the the entire team there, and kind of relive that whole moment that was so like scary for I couldn't even imagine knowing him like you guys know him and being yeah. a part of it but we all had our worst nightmares and now he's back on the field in pads seemingly handling it perfectly I mean what a situation for DeMar Hamlin what have you seen out of him or what did you know about him maybe that you you thought and then what do you know about him now after this entire experience being I know he is one courageous dude like to go through uh, a near-death experience on the football field, playing this, you know, it's a gladiator sport as we all know it. And to do that at all, much less in front of the whole world. I mean, everybody's been following this story um, ever since it happened all the way to where we're at. And it's, it's going to continue. As I told him when he decided he was definitely coming back, I'm like, you're, you know, your story is yet to be written. And uh, it's just, it's going to be exciting to watch your journey. And, and he's just so positive. Uh, mentally, you know, mentally tough, mentally strong. Everybody's here just supporting him. And yesterday was, you know, is, was awesome in the sense that he's putting pads on. We're lining up, and he's really about to line up in nine on seven and uh, and, and be ready to square dudes up. I mean, I, I'd like to consider myself a tough dude, but that's a tough dude. We were talking about that, how, yeah. like, when I had a knee, any of my knee things, whenever you get back into it, my first fear was like, oh, I'm going to hurt it again. Or there's a little bit of pain, I'm going to hurt it again. There's like a, a mental hurdle yes. that people have to get over after getting injured. And we talked about this in the first hour. It's like, that is a big one. What, just yeah. standard tackle. Yes. Die, de death happening. Yeah. And then yeah. on the other, just being like, yeah, I'm, next training camp, I'm not missing a day. Like that right. type <laughs> of stuff is unfathomable for my brain. But that's because... You know, I'm one of these baby buffaloes instead of one of the big ass buffaloes <laughs> you're gonna put out there. I assume behind uh, the, I assume behind the scenes over there, it's an incredible conversation about everything happening in the building with him. No, it, it is. Everyone knew that yesterday was gonna be a big day. It's not, you know, it's it was the biggest hurdle. Yeah, he still got hurdles. We still got to play games and and do more live scrimmage stuff. But just, I mean, literally strapping those pads on that helmet on uh, is is a different feeling. Pads, you know, the first day of pads. You guys know the first day of pads, everybody, yeah, yeah. you haven't done it since, you know, either, you know, last January, February, depending on when your season ended. And so a lot of guys are nervous and that's just natural. But you're talking about a guy who the last time he had pads on, you know, stuff was being cut off. His life was having to be revived. So super proud of him. Uh, it's a great moment for him, for our team, just the whole country. 
uh, to, you know, to be excited about his story. We're all celebrating you guys up there for that and obviously wish him nothing but the best. Yinzer, so uh, mm -hmm. you got to remember that. Tough, uh, tough guy. Going to be a tough guy. Yinzer. For sure. Uh, AJ has a question for you, Bean. Brandon, I'm, I was interested in how – what's it like as a GM to actually sit there and, and observe and watch practice with all these guys in the roster that you put together? I, I, I was just thinking – Back in the day, I used to stand by Ted Thompson sometime, the late, great GM in Green Bay when I was there, and he would sit there in every play. He'd just say, okay, oh, easy, easy, okay. And he'd try to walk in and almost end every single play before the whistle. Yep. And he'd get mad with, with all the extracurricular. I wonder what it's like as a GM. It, it's exactly that, exactly what Ted was doing. You're, you're looking, and when bodies go down, you're looking to see, is everybody getting up? Are all the limbs intact? Nothing, no trainers running over there. You just, you're happy, uh, you know, I always walk over to our trainer as soon as practice is over, like, hey, did I miss anything? Because sometimes you got, you know, we run a couple of periods where we, we got guys playing on one field, another, maybe I missed it. But uh, uh, you want to get better out there, but I'm always the happiest when we walk off the field. We didn't lose anybody. Yeah, I think that is probably the fans' mindsets as well. As we kind of watch along, that first day of training camp or our first day of practice, it was like, Joe Burrow, Jalen Ramsey, like mm -hmm. names yeah. start going out there. Whenever you yeah. see that, like that just slaps reality right back in your face. Like, hey, this could happen once we get yeah. back into this. You got you got ninety guys, yeah. and so it's going to happen. I mean, we've had a few guys here and there, but uh, yeah, I mean, even we ran a play yesterday. Or they ran a little trick play, and uh, Josh took a hit, and he goes down, and and it's like. You know, your 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 air goes out, and you're just like, please, you know, that's that's your quarterback. Every team's going to do that for for anybody, much less your starting quarterback. So tell me when he stands. Tell me when he stands. Up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tell me when he's looking over there. He's over, and then he's getting up and he's giggling. I'm over there going, dude, are you all right? Like, are you are you messing around? Like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, we need not, <laughs> not to see you in that position ever again. You know, I've told you the last few years that I'd like you to trade Josh Allen to us. I don't want anymore. Yeah, we, nope. We got a guy, Anthony Richardson. Okay, I go to training <laughs> camp. I go to training camp and I watch his practice, and I'm like the rest of the NFL fan base. Like I see things, I'm like, okay, oh. we can win this year. Go. Holy shit! And then we're a part of the problem, and we are part because we have NFL rights. So we show these highlights of these young guys that what? never stepped foot on an NFL field before. <laughs> They're wearing yeah. uh, maybe spiders, not even anywhere near pads. <laughs> They're running one-on-ones with a linebacker who's working on a new technique. Yeah. They end up wide open, and it's like, oh, this guy's going to be this guy's going to be the next insert name of Hall of Fame football player that played for 20 years at a very high thing. How do you, as a GM? Whenever you're figuring out who's going to make your team and not make your team, how do you balance like those highlight moments, like oh this guy could fit in in the NFL, versus also like reality of like we haven't really seen shit, right? Is that is that kind of where we're at at training camp right now in your eyes, or has there been enough yeah. to kind of get a good read? Well, I mean, first off, we just put on pads yesterday. I mean, and before that, there's still the social media sensation. Some clip gets out there that a media member put out there or a fan or whatever. And, and then we, whoever it is. They, and then oh, we. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's awesome. It's yeah. going to be hard to stop. You're right. It's yeah. one-on-ones. He's got no safety help. Um, you know, whatever the situation is, stuff that doesn't happen. I mean, we don't play. It's not a one-on-one -on -one game. I mean, it's there are spots where it's man whip a man, but. Um, there's so much where you got, you know, various helps and, and the defenses, you know, you know, the quarterback stand back there, no pressure on him being able to stand flat footed and, and deliver a throw. So, Oh, uh, Bean, stop making excuses. Come on. <laughs> uh, the reality of it. But how do you balance that though? How do you balance like seeing that? And then also like, is the guy good enough to make the team full time? Cause there's only 50. How many, is there more spots now at 53 is still the number? 50, 53. Yeah. We're at 90 man, but you got to cut it to 53 and then 16 back on the practice squad. So no, I mean, you're, you're kind of putting your units together. You're, you're mixing guys up. All right, if this guy's doing well with the threes, let's start putting him with the twos. Is he doing just as well with the twos? If he is, let's keep let's let's get him some reps with the ones. Oh, you know what? Not not quite as effective as the one. Let's put him back with the twos. You're just trying to figure out where he best belongs. Is he going to be a key backup? Is he better, you know, on the third string as a practice squad? Or is this guy maybe he's fighting for a starting spot? So you're kind of just moving him up and down. And as long as they continue to answer those bells. You get you get the preseason games. Can they answer the challenge there? Can they back it up? Is it just a you know a one game wonder? All right, can he do it again in game two? So you're just doing the best you can. It's a short window. You you don't get to see every look with them you want, but you're making the best decision you can. How do you like in the balance of power of things, talent, skill, buy in, everything? What about, like, your culture? feels like your culture matters up there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It feels like in Buffalo your culture matters. That's why the Stephon Diggs thing fucking all of us were like – 
the hell's going on? Because everybody we talk to up there, you, Coach, what? Poyer, what? Vaughn, what? Micah. Joss, what? Micah, what? Noxie. What? I mean, like, everybody we <laughs> yeah. talk to up there is like, fucking love it here. It's like a family yeah. here. We play cards here. We stay here. Yeah. Everything. Like, the culture you've built, I feel like everybody else would like the bottle. Not that other teams don't have it, but if they, everybody's looking for that. How much is that whenever you're kind of evaluating who's going to make your team through training camp? Like, we used to be... At least I was, because I thought I was going to get cut every single year because I ran my mouth a lot you know, <laughs> and, and stuff like that. That's a good mindset, though. You worked your ass off. Scared you were going to get cut every year. I like that mindset. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. think there's enough fear these days of these motherfuckers losing their jobs. <laughs> after, you know what I mean? I don't think there's enough of that anywhere. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. think there's enough of that anywhere. But I used to think to myself, like, uh, I'm going to pick up my trash, obviously, right. because I'm a good human. But also... There's no way I'm going to be the reason why there's some shit on the ground here. Like, mm -hmm. those little things that, like, I think some players get paranoid about. Like, oh, they're mm -hmm. talking to the kitchen staff. They're talking <laughs> to the equipment managers. They're right. talking. Like, how much of that do you have to balance of getting in your building and then also making sure that that doesn't get in? Is that a big part of team evaluation for you? Yeah, it's definitely a big part. It's 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 a tool. It's, it's one of the things you're obviously evaluating how they are on the field, but are they a good teammate? Um, you know, everybody can be a good teammate when you're winning, when things are going well. But yeah. we all know 17-game season, there's going to be adversity. And our team faced a lot of it last year. And if you're going to get through the ups and downs of a 17-game season, you need team first, guys, guys all in. Um, it's, it's not about me. It's about we. All those slogans out there, that's real. And you're right. How do, you, how do they treat the kitchen staff? How do they treat the equipment guys? How do they treat the trainers? How do they treat the security staff? All the people. How do they pick the – Treat the guy that picks him up at the airport. All those people. We talk to every single – and if if we've got an a-hole in here that is is here for himself, you know, the talent's not worth it. It's really not because their true colors are going to shine at the worst moment of the season. Yeah, it doesn't – you know, it doesn't show up till it shows up. I think it's yeah. another way. It doesn't show up till it shows up or whatever. Yeah. Is all these cliches are real. Like, yeah. the reason why they yeah. become cliches is because they are – accurate in there and don't ever say a-hole on my show again Jeez, <laughs> Jeez, you're gonna get us canceled all right people are already you need to not do that on this show i'm fucking sick of it, 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 it aj go ahead uh, yeah i'm fucking sorry no <laughs> Jeez, it. no oh. dump him oh Pew. aj go ahead pal brandon uh as far as like once these these preseason games start i guess how does that process work on evaluating players on other teams that could possibly be cut. It's a tough thing to do. And I know every coach will tell every player going into preseason games, hey, every team is watching these games. So if you don't have a spot on this team, someone else could pick you up. And that's got to be kind of tough to try to gauge who might get cut, who you could possibly pick up in those couple of days. Yeah, the way we do it, AJ, is we, we take our pro scouting department and those guys divide up their teams. I kind of say, hey, you're the GM of X number of teams. And, and we divide them up. They're following these guys all preseason. They're reading clips on them. They're watching any games they play, and it's their job. Yeah, they're not worried about the starters. You know, if they're grading the Jets roster, they're not grading Aaron Rodgers or, or Garrett Wilson and those guys. They're grading the back end guys. Who are the guys that could potentially be released that we need to know? And is it an upgrade over, you know, a guy that we have at that same position, especially as injuries happen? You know, right now you might go, the guy wouldn't, you wouldn't put a claim in for him. But if you have a couple of injuries there, you're going, man, this guy's better than the next guy we have on our roster. You want to talk shit on Joe Douglas at all so we can get another Aaron Rodgers soundbite or no? <laughs> I love Joe Douglas. Ah, I love Joe Douglas. Well, ah, this guy. Uh, <laughs> Pac-Man has a question for you, Bean. Bean, we, we know how good your team is. You pretty much have your starters if you look at it. Is there uh, any young guys that's done stood out that you can tell us about uh, during this process? Yeah, I mean, uh, a couple of our rookies, you know, have definitely stood out. I would, you know, I would start with Dalton Kincaid. He's had he had a good good spring, uh, good start to camp. Again, another guy that you want to see more when guys are being able to press him a little bit more now that we're in pads. And is he going to be able to catch that ball, secure it, taking a hit, you know, things like that. A couple of our linebackers, um, you know, we got Tyrell. We got, you know, we lost Tremaine Edmonds, so we got Tyrell Dodson, you know, who's been here a few years. Terrell Bernard's in his second year. And Balen Spectres in his second year. Those guys are all competing for a middle linebacker. We got some other guys uh, as well, but I would say those guys, uh, you know, we got key eyes on at this point. We've seen a few Kincaid things. Oh, yeah. He's There's been a lot of Kincaid talk. I mean, the rookies kind of get the most amount of chat here early in camp yeah. because everybody either wants to deem them all pro Hall of Fames yep. or bust already. And the Dalton stuff on the internet has been pretty good. Yeah. Well, you as soon as you draft him, you said we're going to see him outside, right? 
Well, we're going to flex them out. I mean, we, we've actually, it's funny, yesterday they had him blocking a little bit inside. Just to oh! Bit, but, you know, he's, you know, we'll have him and Knox on the field. You know, you know we'll run probably more 12 than we've run in the past. But okay. uh, we think he can play the F and the Y. But I would say his first position is the F and, and Dawson's first position be a Y. Explain what the fuck that is. Oh, flexed out, like a flexed out tight end. Right and then a Y is going to be more in line uh, blocker. So, yeah. You know, we'll mix it up some. It's not going to always be the same, but I would say he's best if he's flexed out more of that receiving tight end than that inline blocking tight end. But we're going to work on our, you know, that's one of the things I know that Dalton wants to get better at is his inline blocking. Hey, look at that little break there, huh? You got to feel good about that. Ooh. It look like a go. Oh, yeah. buddy, jump, Pat. Get him under control, mm -hmm. Pat. Yeah, he looked good. Get a little handsy <laughs> out there. Ty Schmidt has a question for you, Bean. Yeah, Brandon, obviously with how good you guys have been over the last several years, like the expectations are always there going into the season. But Pat mentioned it, you know, with all the DeMar stuff and then the dig stuff, which kind of fizzled out and really wasn't a big deal. But – Going into this year, like, have you noticed, has it been a bigger media circus than you guys have ever been around before up there, even with all the expectations? And do you ever worry about, I mean, obviously you have a bunch of veterans at key positions, but do you ever worry about, like, that type of stuff becoming a distraction as you guys are going through camp? You do want to minimize distractions. I don't think the media presence, they've been more for DeMar. You know, the staff stuff was more in June. Um, you know, I think that really, from our standpoint, fizzled out when we went on break. Maybe the national media was still talking about it over the summer, but it wasn't an issue for us internally. We talked, we talked through that in June, and so um, I do think there's been some media stuff around Demar, rightfully so, as as we started this show off. But um, no, you know, last year we had, you know, a lot of the talking heads, a lot of people were crowning us, you know, this is the Super Bowl favorite or whatever, and so um, you know, you'd rather lay low and just you know, come out and just play ball and let your work speak for itself. So I don't think there's, I would say this year, there's probably less people that, you know, with the AFC East getting as stacked as it is, you know, with what the Jets have done, the Dolphins and, and the Patriots have, have made some changes, bringing Bill O'Brien and, and some new players there. So um, I don't think anyone, I don't think it's a, the people are out there, you know, kind of putting the pressure or, or projecting us as that Super Bowl favorite like they were a year ago at this time. Oh, we need to start doing that a little bit. Yeah. 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 No, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. Still the third yeah. favorite. Not a lot of people not a lot of people listen to this and it doesn't really influence anybody, but we'll at least we'll scream. Yeah. 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 For sure. We'll scream. Yeah. Buffalo Bills are Super Bowl. Best right. the NFL. What? Are they gonna go perfect this year? Wow. Yeah, probably. Right. I looked yeah. at That's their schedule. I don't see a single L. No, nope. no, no, no. No, no. Nope. I think they're favored in every game actually. Twenty points. Yeah. If there's even a close game, that's a loss. Yeah. I mean that's where the Buffalo Bills are. That's I'll tell you what, we're, hey, part, Pat, of the we're part of the problem. Stop being an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. Not on this show, babe. Not on this show. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Brandon, right now, one of the big things with training camp is these holdouts. And obviously, uh, the Bills aren't a team that's dealing with that. But there are some big, big names. Bosa, Zach Martin. Josh some, Jacobs. Josh Jacobs. Uh, some others. But for you, as the GM, what is kind of that process like? Are you reaching out a lot? Or is it kind of similar to if you're negotiating with a free agent where there might not be any talks or negotiations for a little and then you come back and revisit it right, right before, you know, maybe the first or second preseason game. If you're saying if I'm one of the GMs of, of those teams yes. that has to hold out. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're, um, I mean, fortunately we haven't had to deal with that here, but um, you know, I think what you're doing is you're, you're trying to keep the lines of communication. Maybe you're, you're, you're in disagreement on what the price is or, or what one's looking for the other. I think you just, you're trying to have as much open dialogue as you can, and hopefully you're putting some kind of deadlines. Hopefully both parties can agree, hey, we've got to come to some consensus because we all know that people react and respond to, to deadlines. And is it game one? Is it to get them in some preseason action? you got to kind of agree on some terms that, hey, by this point, we got to get this resolved. I don't care if we got to stay up all night every night for two or three days, but um, hopefully – and worst case – have the agent fly to you or you fly to them, sit in a room and let, let's knock this out so we can get the player back in, you know, in, in uniform. Business is always better done in person. That's why we yeah. got Faith Old Gumpy's coming back to, <laughs> yeah. you know, the United States of America. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. that'll be the case. But you, I believe you told us that whenever you heard there was potentially some rumblings that Stephon Diggs and the Vikings weren't really great anymore. This is kind of a job of a GM. You kind of poke your head in and say, hey. What's going on over there? Mm. And then there's, you know, some <laughs> stuff. Whenever you guys and Diggs were going through the couple-day, very public, seemingly situation, was there calls? And have you been on the phone with anybody 
with any of the situations going on in the NFL right now? No, um, you know, no one called on Diggs. I think people know uh, that, you know, he, he's ours and we wouldn't, even if there was an issue and, and he was never asking to be true. That never came up. I got a great relationship with, with his agent, Adisa Bakari. So it was truly never an issue. It was just more us getting in a room and talking through how, how last season finished and, and getting on the same page. But um, no, with, with, the, with the guys right now um, that are out there, we have, we have not, I think, if those GMs were interested in, in, you know, doing business or they thought, hey, I'm going to trade this player, uh, they would definitely reach out. So uh, we just kind of, you know, sit back and let them handle it. And like I said, if they feel like they want to, I'm sure they would start shopping them to teams around the league. Go ahead, AJ. Do you ever get time to relax? Like when do you have – I guess we just came off your off time, right? I know you're a good golfer, but what is your, your day-to-day during camp? I would imagine is a 24-hour gig. Like – I don't know. From here on out, you're just in for the long haul, aren't you, until the Super Bowl? Pretty much. I mean, I do play a lot of golf during the summer. Um, How was the season? How were we? Did we suck this year or are we good? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I always do, Pat? I get my game and my swing right where I, you know, right where I want it, and then, and then we got to put the sticks up. But uh, fortunately here in Rochester, we're right across the street from Oak Hill where they played the PGA Championship this year. So – uh, snuck over there a couple times uh, the day before camp, and then we had an off day Saturday, and uh, we got one more coming up. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find my way over there. But other than that, yeah, we're just here. We're watching, uh, you know, watching our guys breaking down, you know, our film and getting guys ready to, uh, you know, start looking at other NFL rosters. All right, fifty thousand dollar donation, charity of your choosing. What do we need that over under to be for that next time you go to Oak Hill? Hmm. We, you, hey, listen, we're doing a lot of faith right now. And yeah. you're being, you know, hey, 50,000 bucks ain't nothing to sneeze at. 80? I got I the under. 72. I thought his handicap yeah. was six. I've heard you're a stick, so you're trying to sandbag us like A.J. Hawk right now a little bit. How about we do this? We'll do 79. Okay. 79, we'll donate 25,000. Better than 79, we'll donate 50,000. Above it, Brandon Bean donates $2 million. Okay. <laughs> a little pressure. Hey, a little pressure on those. A little pressure. On those. <laughs> That'd be a lot of pressure. No, no. All right. So we'll go. You go under 79, 50,000. 79 will be 25,000. Above that, obviously, we just will act like it didn't happen. Nobody will remember this. We'll just kind of move on. I'll be glad to donate if I go over it. How, how much? How much? 25. Wow. wow. That's a call. Wow. Beast. Wow. All right, yep. Look at that. That's how deals are made. We're not in person, but hey, hey, we're to do what we got to do. Tone has a question for you. Uh, Brandon, I was looking at the roster that you built, and you already had a bunch of pass rushers in, in Shaq Lawson and Vaughn and Russo and Epineza, and then you, you add Leonard Floyd, and you even bring in Shane Ray. Like, is that – did you look at your defense and you said, we need to get better at getting to the, pat, or to the quarterback, or did you just look at every single team in the AFC has a quarterback and that's how you're going to win games? Yeah, I mean, that's exactly it is. Uh, ultimately, when you get to those, you know, if you, we've, we've been fortunate enough. We won the division the last few years. We've got into the playoffs. We've made some runs. But, you, you know, the further you go, the better those quarterbacks are. And so, obviously, your quarterback's got to play well, but you gotta, you got to affect the other team's quarterback if you're going to get over the top. So, uh, always trying to find different ways to pressure those guys, different, different types of rushers, power, speed, uh, finesse, you know, all those guys that can play, you know, inside, can rush from the outside. So, um, that's, that's, it. that's what it is. Just trying to, and also keeping, keeping them fresh as many guys that we can rotate in there. That's just how we, you know, we like to build this defense. I think that's how, you know, it's like weapons on offense, mm-hmm. seemingly yep. very deep in the teams that are going and then pass rushers very deep on the teams that are going. It seems to be trends with the way the game is shifting. Is that why this is what football has become? And do you see this being the trend forever? Or is like, like, are we going to get back to like right now, the running back market and, is a big conversation, yeah. obviously. The running back market's a big conversation, but the game has changed than what it was yeah. 10 years ago, 15 years ago. The rules have changed that. Do you think something's cyclical, though, or are you trying to make your team for what football is now, or do you have to project, like, a change in the game in the future? Because if everybody gets small, you would assume mm-hmm. that what teams are going to do is they're going to get big. Like, you would just assume that somebody's going to do that. Do you think about that as, as a whole whenever you're shaping the team, or is that not really cross your mind because it's too much bullshit? No, I think you're always trying to figure out, well, how can you best build your team to give you as as many advantageous matchups as possible? And the rules, it's more of a, you you said it, the league is set up more for passing. The rules are set up from pass interference, illegal contact. There's just so many rules that 
uh, you're going to score more points if you can throw the ball effectively. You do have to be able to run the ball. We don't want to just be a passing team. You're going to play weather games. You're going to play teams that um, are really good at, you know, you can't slow down their pass rush unless you can run it. So we want to be able to do both. But if the teams that generally are, are winning the Super Bowl or winning the AFC or NFC championships, they're able to throw the football. And so, uh, you know, that's kind of where we start. Hey, you got a running back situation going on right now, and it's very touchy, and it's not just your team that it probably has eyes on this particular situation that's viewing it's the entire NFL on precedent and right. what's going on with Naeem Hines. Now, obviously, we love Naeem. He was here in Indy whenever he went to Buffalo. We are very, very pumped up for him. This, what I heard happen to him is so fucking heartbreaking. I, I couldn't even imagine him or you guys with the hopes of what this year would be another year in the system with what takes place yeah. Behind the scenes, how's that conversation go with Naheem, his people? What does the future look like with him? And has that been a thorn or something you have to worry about every single day? And how's it going? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Like, listen, uh, when you have a non-football injury, which is what it is, and you, know, you guys know the rules. Unfortunately, there's certain things you can't, you can't do. If you get hurt on those things, it can affect your salary. And so, yeah, we're still working through that. Naheem's scheduled to have surgery here soon. Uh, feel bad for him. He's a great young man. We were excited to get him last year in the trade, and, and he had – you remember the game after DeMar got hurt, he takes the two kickoffs back. And this offseason, you know, we had done a lot of things to incorporate him into the offense. He was obviously still going to be a dual threat oh. as a returner, but uh, Ken Dorsey was very disappointed, uh, you know, like we all were to get that news here a couple of weeks ago. It's just like, geez, we hadn't even started and, and we're losing someone. So uh, stinks for him, stinks for us, but – uh, we'll we'll support him through that and uh, hopefully get him rehabbing here soon once he has surgery. Yeah, it's it's crazy because like that non-football injury thing is we all know about it. Mm -hmm. Every player knows it, but it's also it's not just like now. Granted, you're going to be the one that has to make the decision and be the bad guy in the whole yeah. thing, and there's other people that are going to be in it. But like the whole league is like, let's watch what precedent we're setting here. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, like let's <laughs> let's let's watch. This. It's a tough situation. Like obviously, we're very sad for Naeem Hines, but also. For you, that is not a fun thing to have to deal with. And after the year that you guys had last year, and obviously you don't make any excuses, but it was like, it's seemingly one thing after another. I guess that's why you get paid the big bucks. I'm fucking happy I'm not you. That's yeah. all yeah. yeah. so I want to let you know. Good luck this season. We appreciate the hell out of you, man. I appreciate you guys. Always love being on with you. Hey, 79, 25,000. All right. Under 79, we're donating 50. Over 79, you're donating 25. Yep, I'll let you know. I promise you. I'll have, I'll have witnesses. I was about to say, golfing alone. Dan Orlovsky. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Dan right. Orlovsky there you go. did false the math. Yeah. Yeah. He, pen he, pen he, pen he pencil whipped you? He, he pen yeah. pimp. He did. He did pencil yes, whip he it. Did. Yeah. For charity. Yeah. Ridiculous. Unbelievable. <laughs> for charity. For charity. Oh, 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 <laughs> it was unbelievable. Mojo to do that for charity. I agree. We don't need any of that. Not in <laughs> our world, not in your world. We appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen, Brandon Bain. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good luck to him. Yeah. yeah. Hey, he's he's... Yeah, he needs to do it. He gets you to 73 or yeah. 72. Yeah. He just played there, what, last Saturday? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. He knows exactly what he's going to get. Yes. Yeah.